This is session two, continuing the experiment on the ecological niche modeling workflow. We have now uploaded a data file with species occurrence data and now the workflow is initiated and it uh, the first interaction is coming up and it's, we, here we can choose a range of different niche modeling algorithms. Every time you choose an algorithm, you can actually see what it is doing and as a detailed description for each algorithm, you have source information about authors and the bibliographical details for each of the algorithms. So we are choosing this one and waiting for the next interaction. That should be about testing the parameters or uh, changing the parameter settings here. We see for each algorithm which parameters uh, can be defined and uh, there's a more detailed description if you go on this field. Uh, we just go for now with the default parameters. So we have defined the algorithm, we have defined the parameters and in this experiment then you also need to define the environmental data that you want to use in the experiment and here the workflow gives you access to a large amount of environmental data. So here we, we go, we choose terrestrial data, annual mean temperature, annual precipitation, minimum and maximum temperatures of the warmest and coldest month. And we will also choose additional one additional data layer which is the altitude in meters. Here. So these are the environmental data we have now selected and there's one more uh, input that the workflow needs and that's the definition of the um, geographical area where the model should be built. And here we can choose existing layers, these are global layers, uh, but we don't necessarily want to build the model globally, we want to have, uh, you can also choose uh, country as a mask to build the layers or you can uh, create or upload layers that you have created somewhere in another software. We just go and create our own mask. This is a uh, experiment that is taking place in Europe. This species has a European distribution. So here the workflow provides us with a geospatial interface we can now define masks ourselves. So we're just defining a mask for Europe here in this case. And we have to, if we, if we have selected an area, that's the area where the species live. So we can use it to build a mask and we can also project into it, but we can also project into another mask if we want to see if the species is able to live in another part of the planet. But to define a mask, we need to enter a name, test mask, uh, that was run number three, run number three. And we should specify the resolution, uh, that's 10 arc minutes, is 600 arc seconds. Now the mask is created and then automatically deposited on the server that can be accessed together with all the other environmental data that we have just seen. So the mask is created. Uh, as it turns blue, you can see the name here. And we can now continue the workflow. And now the service is starting to construct the model and test it automatically. So as the next step, we should see the test results, how well the model performs.
So here we have to test, test statistics, accuracy of more than 70%. This is the rock core that shows the area under the curve. And let's say we are pleased with it and we think the model has been constructed well and performs well, so we can now continue. And then we leave the model creation mode and we enter the next mode, which is the actual um, model projection mode. Here we can choose, uh, before we enter the model projection mode, we can choose different ways of um, additionally testing the performance of the model, but we're not going to choose that now, so we skip this validation and go right into the projection mode. So now we have the first interaction that is about the definition of the area and the scenario that we want to project in. We can say uh, present, uh, we can, can add the name of the layer we want to project. Um, and here we can have to choose all the layers we want to use that were used to build the model for, uh, for, create, uh, for projection. So here we can do, choose different scenarios climatic scenarios and also different resolutions but we have we want to have one projection that is exactly the same as uh, model creation so we stay with this one and uh, keep those layers Now we have to define which area we want to project into and we could for example choose a country we want to now project into but we can also choose the mask that we have created because you can find it here it's on the server. So we take that mask that was a mask of Europe and the model will be, will be now projected into that mask. So once this is finished, we are asked if we want to run another projection and we say yes, because we want to have the two projections of the model. One is into the world of today and one is into a climatic scenario from 2050. That's in 40 years, less than 40 years. So we define this in the second projection as 2050 projection. And now we have to change the environmental data, so we're not using uh, annual mean temperature from today, we're using annual mean temperature from 2050, uh, but under the same geographic resolution. We do that with all layers, so we are replacing the present uh, environmental data with the 2050 environmental data. So these are IPCC layers uh, and of course for altitude there is no 2050 projection because it's not going to change very much in the next 40 years. But we keep the same resolution. Again we will be asked now for the geographic restrictions on the projection. And we can again choose the layer that we also chose before. That's the mask we have created. And now the second projection is finished. And I think that's enough for this experiment. We can now go and finish the experiment and then compare the two different projections of the model.
So we click no. And now, now the workflow is about to finish and before it uh, logs all the results in the output file we have a chance to look at the results in the geospatial interface again. So what we can see here is uh, the species distribution that was used to build the model and then we have two layers here that now projected the model so this is one projection area the intensity of the color shows the suitability of the habitat as it is projected by the model this is for today where the species can live today and as you see this matches very well with the observation so it's a good model this one and then that's 2050 and you see the red areas are clearly shifting towards the north uh, while we are having today um, the central part of the distribution around central Europe, northern Europe it will be really moving into Scandinavia in the next 50 years the distribution Okay, so we can finish the workflow now and then all outputs are locked in, in the output file and that can then be accessed and shared uh, with colleagues. So gathering run and outputs locked. So here we have all the information we have the area statistics. You can always return to the projections if you want to. We have the area statistics, and here these are the raster layers that are important now for further analysis of the statistical changes. And you can now still change the name of your run. You can uh, save that. You can manage your run. For example, you can uh, uh, share it with certain people. Let's say we want to share this with uh, Biowell project members. So you might share it with everyone in the project and you want to have this affected immediately. So this one is now accessible to everyone in the BioWare project. And we can run the data sweep where we basically now choosing everything that was defined in this run, the algorithm, the parameters, all the parameters defined for this run and just uh, change the input file. That would be an, another species distribution. So we can now add as many iterations as we want of this workflow with different input file. Um, okay, now this is the end of session three. I will break it here now. Oh, I'm sorry, this is end of session two. End of session two.